Howdy folks and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit more maintenance work on the blazer. Um, you Last time you saw we uh, went ahead and replaced the rear axle seal and uh, and the rear brakes. Uh, we took a, we put about a thousand miles on it, a little over a thousand miles on it since then. And uh, we started getting a little bit of growling noise uh, from the front brakes which means that uh, it's time to get the front brakes changed. We'll walk up here and show you that, uh, yeah, there we go. You can see that uh, the pads are, are getting pretty thin there. So we need to go ahead and do that and we need to go ahead and get the brakes changed. We've got brake pads for it. Uh, the other thing, since we're going to have to pull uh, the brake, uh, the calipers off, we're going to go ahead and pull the hubs off because uh, I have not repacked the bearings or serviced the, uh, the front hubs on this uh, truck since I've had it. So, we have not gone down and gotten a new seal for it yet. Uh, I've always found with some of these older vehicles, especially dealing with some of the parts houses these days, that uh, it's best to go ahead and take the old seal in so you can match it up and make sure that what you're getting is what's going to be uh, the right part for your vehicle. So at any rate, uh, we've already gone ahead and pulled the tire and wheel off of it, uh, so we'll get at it. Okay, first thing we got to do is we've got to get these two bolts uh, loose. Go ahead and pull the caliper off. There we go. And you can see that the, they weren't they weren't too terribly bad. I mean, I mean they were. They were definitely in need in need of replacement, but they hadn't gotten down into the rivets yet. And so the surface on the rotors are still plenty good enough. We're not going to bother uh, turning the rotors. So we're going to go ahead and hang the hang the caliper up here so it's not dangling by the brake hose, and we're going to go ahead and work on getting the um, getting the hub pulled off. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to pull pull the locking hub loose. Now, while I was gathering tools together last night. I found that uh, we had, there's six bolts on here, or six little screws. Four of them have a Torx head. I don't know if this is going to focus in or not. And then uh, two of them had regular socket head cap screws, which I'm not sure why that's the case, but... Uh, Doubt that was done from the factory. That was probably a maintenance issue uh, while it was still in the military. So with some of these old military rigs, you, you got to keep an eye out for stuff like that because weird things happen in the motor pool guys would lose stuff and uh you know you lose a screw or a fastener and uh you know you order the part in and it comes in well you know it may have been 
something that was okay now I have never torn these kind of these hubs apart there's a Phillips head screw right there so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and take a pause here and I'm gonna go get the TM and see what it takes to pull these hubs apart because normally all the ones that I've had for you know everything else that I own um, you just pull these screws loose and then uh, uh, you know this portion of it will come out but uh, there may be something different with this one so we're gonna go check that out okay we did go ahead and check the TM and there's nothing about uh, having to um, take anything else other than the six screws out is because uh, you can see we've got an o-ring right there and this has not been a part in a long time so we're going to need we've got a snap ring right here so we're going to need to get a set of snap ring pliers to get this part be able to get uh this uh the locking hub part of it out we're gonna go get us a snap ring plier and we're also gonna get us a little tray here to put all of our parts in so we don't lose anything and we can also keep it up off the ground and according to the manual the tm this snap ring right here isn't always in there and it also says that it is not 100 percent necessary for operations so if you have one of these 1009s and it doesn't have that snap ring on there you'll still be okay right there's another little little wire snap ring in here there we go yeah so what we're gonna need is like a little ice pick or a little flat tip screwdriver to get that popped out of there All right, now we can see where the ends of the clip are. kind of helps you get you get the screwdriver in there and then something else in where you can hook it from behind uh, and start working it out uh, because it's in a groove that's right here in the hub and there we go there we go now you can see see that thing come out now this should just come right out of here of course let's try this then There we go. There's your lock and hub. 
and just pay attention to how you took it apart because it's got to go back together uh, exactly the opposite of that all right now you can see in there I don't know if you can how well you can see in there you can see that there we go uh, you can see the spindle locking nut so we've got to find the right socket for that and uh, hopefully I've got one and uh, we'll get the spindle locking nut pulled off but I got to go find the but I got to go find the uh, the socket for that so we'll be back in a bit now this cabinet here is where I keep all of my stuff like my gear pullers slide hammer and this drawer here is where I keep all of my spindle nut sockets and we'll take a look at this one and see if this is the right one all right that is the right one this should not be in here all that tight but knowing the and there we go knowing how mechanics especially mechanics in the motor pool can be not saying that all of them are bad because a lot of them are really good and really enjoy what they're doing but every once in a while you always end up with that one guy all right and see we pull this one off and behind it we have the lock washer <sighs> these always can be kind of fun to get out and you can see this here's the lock washer you can see we got all these holes in it and those holes will line up with a pin on the nut that's behind it and this is the nut that goes up against the bearing You can see this one has this little pin when you tighten this up you'll go ahead and put the lock washer on and you see it's got the little key that'll go into a slot on the spindle or on the hub and then uh, and then you'll line it up and that will keep keep this nut from backing off and keeping your spindle bearings tight um, or at the proper tension and then this will go on and it'll sandwich that which will uh, which won't let this come loose and after you get all of that fun and excitement done just pull the hub right on off and uh, oh yeah last time this was serviced was when it was still in the military because that is GAA right there. That is just regular old bearing grease. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. And uh, we'll get the we'll get the hub seal, uh, the old hub seal removed, and then we'll take that into town and um, uh, so that we can compare it with uh, what they've got for us down at the auto parts store. Hopefully, they've got one in stock. You know, this is, you know, Chevy. They should. I, I just, I can't imagine them not having it in stock. But nowadays, you just never know. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get this seal popped out. Um, I use this, you know sometimes uh i can you can use a screwdriver um but i find that this works pretty well you'll set this in and get it 
uh, make sure it gets hooked pretty good on the on the inside of the seal. You're going to destroy the seal, but it doesn't matter. Seal's getting thrown away anyway. But yeah, woohoo! Now I'm going to throw the seal at the camera. And there you go. You got your seal out, and we're going to pull our rear bearing out. Take a look at this. And uh, when you're looking at your wheel bearings, you're always looking for uh, any kind of pitting or, uh, you know, anything bad like that. Generally, you can take a look at your, um, at your races. I'm going to wipe this one out real good. And if the races don't look chattered, pitted up, or discolored, uh, they'll probably be okay. Yeah. At any rate, you can look down in there, and you can see that, uh, the races aren't really discolored. You don't have any pitting or chattering, you know, appearances, uh, you know, uneven appearances on the bearing. Um, these ones here, we're going to go ahead and just, uh, we're just going to re-grease these, uh, repack them, and, uh, and put it back together. Now, let's take a look at the rotors here. There is an awful lot of pitting on these rotors this thing like i said this thing sat uh, about two blocks off the beach for many years and it sat idle for a long time so we do have some pitting here um honestly these rotors probably should be replaced but uh to tell you the truth i've run worse uh, if you don't, if you see something like this and don't feel comfortable with it, by all means, replace the rotors. Uh, I feel plenty comfortable about this. I drove it, um, like I said, about 1,200 miles last week uh, in the mountains and uh, never towing a trailer as well, towing a small trailer. But uh, and I never had any any real issues. Um, but uh, guarantee that by the time the <clears throat> comes time to do the next service on we will be replacing the rotors all right folks uh we are back it's the next day um we went down yesterday got the hub seals and uh by the time we got home it was uh wind lots of clouds and starting to rain uh but it's may up here in northern nevada which basically means it may be 80 degrees it may rain it may snow and it may all happen on the same day so at any rate uh let's go ahead and get the bearings packed on this uh wheel we already did the right front wheel uh so that's all taken care of um didn't need to do two of them on camera for you guys so at any rate we're going to go ahead and get the uh the left front side put back together bearings packed and everything else like that and uh and then we'll move on to the next thing we got to do this all right first thing we've got to do is i'm going to make sure we wipe wipe the old bearings down um some people uh will go ahead and uh you know put them in the parts washing tank and wash them out real good i generally haven't found that that's a problem unless I end up with bearings that are suspect, that look like they may not be, um, you know, clean or that they may be damaged. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get this wiped down. We've already determined that there's no real, real damage to the bearings. We're going to set this bearing, this is the inner bearing here. We're going to set this down in our bearing packer. Now, if you've never seen one of these... You can get them. I got this down at uh, Craig and Auto back when it was Craig and before it was O'Reilly's. And uh, these things are really great for packing bearings. Uh, you just put your bearing in there. And you, let's see, get this hub out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. And uh, just push down on it. And you kind of sometimes kind of wiggle it around a little bit. 
until all of the old grease is pushed out from between the rollers on your bearings. And then pull it out and uh, you can see you got all your old nasty grease is up top there. Wipe that off and toss that in the trash can or wipe it off with a rag however you see fit to do it. Um, generally I'll go ahead and wipe it on a rag. I'll have a rag set aside just for for grease and anytime I do any cleanup with grease on a rag that rag gets thrown away. Um, I have learned that you cannot clean grease out of a out of a shop rag. Um, matter of fact I probably will never be allowed back in that laundromat again after trying that one time. I knew better than to try it in the launder in the washing machine at home. Make sure you get all your grease, you know, your excess grease and stuff out of the inside of the hub. You don't have to get all of it out. Uh, at least I don't. And then you'll take your bearing, take all the excess stuff, kind of slather it around the inside there, and then put some fresh grease on the inside of the hub. What that does is that will go ahead you don't want to put a lot just enough so that as it as the wheel spins and as heat gets generated in there it'll help um you know make sure that there's grease stays in the bearings this, this stuff you know it, it takes a pretty high temperature to get this grease so that it'll flow you know like a liquid almost um but um it just it just helps to make sure that you get uh you know that you have grease where where it's supposed to be going and then just drop that down in there wipe your hands off now the next thing we want to do is make sure we don't have any grease on the sealing surface of the where the seal is going to press into the hub make sure that the that this portion of it here goes to the inside of the hub get your hammer and your bearing driver and uh, if it starts going in a little cockeyed tap on the other side is what you don't want to do you don't want this to happen you don't want it to pop up and out of there uh, sure she's all nice and flat in there take a little bit of extra grease and right on the right on the on the seal you want to make sure you have a little bit of grease on that seal then you can take take your hub flip it back over on your bench Yeah, well, we did not get all of the old grease out of this side. This grease that was in here was fairly clean, so I suspect that this may have been serviced, you know, uh, recently, miles-wise, time-wise. I know it hasn't been serviced in a long time. So, at any rate, uh, you're going to take your front bearing your outer bearing do the same thing to it kind of wipe some of the excess old stuff out of out of it set her back in the in the uh, wheel bearing packer some of your, your excess old nasty grease off make sure you've got a good coat of grease on the outside of the bearing here and on the inside of the race or on the race inside the hub 
and then flop her on down in there and you can go ahead and put the bearing on in there now or you can wait until after you get it set up on the spindle but uh, I like having everything in one spot when I do it so next thing we're going to do is make sure all of our uh, bearing retainer nuts are wiped clean the lock lock washer plate wipe it clean and then the other uh, basically the nut that controls the tension the one with the pin on it make sure it's wiped clean now we're going to head on over to the truck we're going to put this back in here so we don't get dirt down in our grease and uh, go set this on the truck all right we're going to carefully line all of this up and uh, kind of rotate it as you push it into place And you can make sure that that bearing is set in there. Now we're going to go ahead. Now we've gotten the tools together. You notice that I do have a torque wrench here. According to the TM, that is required. So you're going to take your socket, making sure that this little pin here is pointed out towards you. Set that in there and just screw that down by hand. Until it gets hand tight. Alright, now, according to the TM, you're going to set your torque wrench to 50 foot-pounds and you're going to slowly torque it to 50 foot-pounds as you're turning it and what this does is this seats the bearing there we go now we're going to back it off. And we're going to reset the torque wrench back down to 35 foot pounds. And torque it to 35. And then you're going to back it off about 3 eighths of a turn. Okay, that is a quarter turn. That's about three-eighths of a turn right there. Uh, you'll see, you'll notice that at that three-eighths of a turn, you've got a little bit of play there. And so you're going to take this by hand. Bring it up so that it's tight. And uh, I just use the, the wrench here to kind of just a little bit. You want a little bit of a drag, a little bit of drag there. Now, you're going to take your, your washer plate, your locking plate, and you see you've got this little, little tab right here. And at the top of the spindle, there's a slot. And you're going to get down, and you're going to look and see where that little pin is. And uh, you're going to line that, that thing up. And if you're lucky, you'll see that that pin is lined right up in the hole there. If you're not lucky, you need to 
work that back nut back and forth a little bit until it lines up with one of those holes. But you got to make sure, you've got to make absolutely certain that that washer is flat in there. And, uh, and, in, and uh, one of those locking nuts are in the hole. Or that's make sure that that pin is in one of the locking holes. That's what I meant to say. And then I go ahead and do, with this particular socket, I can set that uh, the outer nut on. And you're going to spin that on. The manual says to torque that to 160 foot pounds. Um, I have. I won't do that. I'll go ahead and uh, because I need to be able to take it off again at some point in time. So I'm going to bring it up to 100 foot-pounds because you don't want that thing coming loose. If that comes loose, then the next thing you know, your bearings are smoked and uh, you're sitting by the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. And there we go. And uh, always remember, when you're done torquing something, just bring your torque wrench back to zero. You don't want to let it sit with, uh, with torques, uh, you know, setting, uh, setting up there. And this one starts at 10 pounds, so I bring it down to 10 pounds and set it. <clears throat> then we can put it back up in the drawer. The next thing we have to do now is to put the hub all back together. Go ahead and get a rag and wipe the, the dirty nasties off of this. And uh, I will go ahead and uh, I usually will go ahead and get a, um, uh, put a little bit of fresh grease on it, which we have right here and just get a little bit out of the out of the little uh, bearing packer there and what this is going to do is this is going to make it so that uh, you know, if I'm fording a creek or something like that and get a little bit of water in there, it's still going to hopefully uh, make it so that I can still take this thing apart. And go ahead and get the hubs, that, the inner splines lined up. And get the outer splines lined up. And why in the heck they're not wanting to line up, I don't know. That's kind of rude. The other one went together just fine. Maybe I should have filmed the other side being put together. Uh, that's got to be the... Yeah, that's the... There we go. Sometimes you got to spin the, the inner axle shaft get that in there and then don't forget our retaining ring and that goes in all the way there's a groove all the way inside the hub so push that all the way in there run the screwdriver all the way around or whatever you're using go ahead and push that in all the way and we're going to do the same thing with the locking hub here. Put a little bit of... Well, that one's a lot of grease, but I don't need to put that much on there. And then our spring. And then we'll line that up, press that in, and... Uh, That's the way it goes. And 
we'll take our little retaining screw here find the hole for that But not least, we need to go find our snap ring pliers because we got to put our snap ring now. According to the manual, this snap ring is not absolutely required, but it was there. I'm going to put it back on. Make sure that that thing is fully seated in the in the groove. All right, the next the last step is going to be installing the cover, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to go get us some anti seize put a little bit of anti-seize around the edge here so that it's not so difficult the next time we take this this locking hub off you also want to make sure that this o-ring here is back in the groove and the reason why I'm putting the, this stuff on the hub and not on the not on the locker here is because I don't want anti-seize all over everything. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take one of these screws and get it lined up with one of these holes here. And... And then get your socket and get it started started in there. Now what I did do is because this side had all Torx hardware and or had mostly Torx hardware and a couple of Allen head screws. And the other side had mostly Allen head screws but a couple of Torx fasteners. I went in and swapped them around so that all... Well, the left side has torque fasteners and all of the right side has the other ones. And it helps to get everything started first before you start to tighten them down. And now we have to find there. And uh Start tightening it down, just go around in a pattern. Give each one a couple of turns, and it'll start s settling this hub in. They do have some torque specs on it, but I don't have an inch pound torque wrench. Now once you get it, get them down so that they're snug, you can go ahead and give it a couple of ugga duggies or little iggy diggies. You don't want the ugga duggies, you don't want the big ones, you want the iggy diggies. And there you go. Go ahead and spin it, making sure that your inner axle's not spinning, and then put it in the lock position. And make sure it'll go into lock and there we go and that is basically servicing the wheel bearings on an m1009 now we're going to go ahead and get our brake shoes out and uh, <coughs> or 
brake pads, excuse me, and uh, get those uh, replaced and everything put back together. Okay, we are back and we're gonna go ahead and get these brake calipers. One of the first things you gotta do is you gotta compress your, uh, your piston right here. Uh, because the brake pads, the new ones are gonna be obviously a lot thicker. And so you've got to go ahead and compress this down. I use good old C-clamp. Now, before you get too carried away with mashing down on this, you need to go ahead and pop. I've already got this one undone because I went ahead and did the other side. And make sure that you uh, you leave the lid loose because as you push in on those brake, uh, as you push in on that piston, you're going to be displacing the fluid from the caliper back up into the master cylinder. So you don't want to go ahead and create a, an overpressure system in the master cylinder there. So just slowly... And uh, easily push this back in until uh, till you get it in far enough to go ahead and give you enough room. I usually like to push them in until they, you know, pretty much are on the, you know, up against the, so that the old shoe or the old pad is almost up against the, uh, the housing of the caliper here. And that is that. Now we pull our pads out and this is how cheap these manufacturers have gotten. This is the back pad. Always make sure that your little squeaker here is towards uh, towards the inside, uh, up against the piston here, or on the same side as you know the one that you took it off as as the one that came off. Uh, for these particular calipers, that's how it's done. But this is how cheap they are. They don't even include a replacement little retainer here you know this is what you get when you go down to your local most of your local parts houses these days uh, because all of this stuff is made in China now you're you're gonna be paying big dollars to get the good USA made stuff now. So anyway, you'll put your retaining spring back on there and uh, and it and it doesn't fit the caliper real well. I mean, you got to line it up just perfectly and then slide that on in there. And uh, tap it in to make sure that that pad is seated fully. Now, one of the other things you're going to notice here is you've got these little uh, little uh, spacer rings. These are what the, the bolts go through. And this uh, is what floats, allows the caliper to float and to compress in, you know, basically move position as the brake shoes are, uh, or as the pads are getting worn. So, we're going to have to uh, pry those back out, but you take your outer pad, slide it into the slot where it needs to be, and you may have to tap it in there to make sure, but make sure it's, it's seated, and then also make sure that when you put your calipers back on, that uh, that you don't twist up your 
your brake hose here. And this is uh, there we go. And you'll slide those on there. You'll see, you can see right here that is hitting up against the uh the mounting bracket. And you can also see that the master cylinder has puked. So somebody must have topped it off at some point in time, not realizing that the brakes were getting pretty low. So let me go ahead and reposition the camera here. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is taking my screwdriver or pry bar or whatever you need and prying this spacer back out so that it will fit over the boss there. You got to do that on the upper one and on the lower one. If you get everything all lined up, you don't want to over, tar over torque them or over tighten them, but you don't want them too loose either. And there we go. We've got brakes done. As you can see here, it uh, puked a little bit of brake fluid out. Uh, this little deal here on the uh, on the seal on the lid needs to be pushed back in. Remember that these take dot five brake fluid the dot five silicon stuff and the reason why the military's done that is for um because dot five won't absorb moisture like dot three will uh, you can leave something with dot five brake fluid in it sit for 50 years and uh and you'll still have brakes in it and it won't uh the wheel cylinders the calipers the master cylinder won't rust out um because of moisture with a dot three system even if you keep it sealed up and keep it down in the desert it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and uh and that's why you end up with uh older vehicles that have sat for a long time with dot three in them they'll they won't have any brakes at all at any rate, uh, that is it for uh, doing the hubs and the and the calipers. The only thing we got, only thing we really got left that we want to do is go in and you notice that the brake pedal goes all the way to the floor. That is because the calipers are still. Um, still extended out or retracted in farther than they need to be so always before you take off after doing a set of disc brakes 
mash the brakes pedal a couple of times just to make sure you got a brake pedal before you take off down the road.